Hey guys, what's up? I'm here to say that I moved out and I'm on my own. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to another What I Eat in a Week video where I show you everything I ate in a week in a video. If you couldn't tell already, obviously I'm in a new location as most of my other videos because well, it's also in the title. I finally moved out of my parents' house and I'm on my own with a roommate, but on my own as much as I have ever been. And we did our first, mm, well, I did my first on my own grocery shopping trip the other day to Trader Joe's. I wanted to do a what I eat in a week, obviously of like the first week away, the first week after I moved out. Although, there was a few days that I didn't film. Well, we moved on Saturday, we moved on Saturday, and then um, I started this video on Monday, because the first two days we were kind of like, well, the first day we're moving, so, you know, it's not really like, moved out yet, I'm like, moving. And then the other day, it was very interesting. And then I got takeout, we got the first of that. Hopefully, there's a good mix of, like, home-cooked meals, and also lazier, less home-cooked meals, because that's just how it be when you're moving in. Um, every time I want to make anything, I realize there's like five things that I haven't unpacked yet, or I unpacked them, but I haven't washed them yet. Or I have them, but I don't have the lid for them out yet. Eventually, I'll do like a kitchen tour. Well, I don't know if I want to do like fridge and pantry tour on its own, or like full kitchen tour, so you can see like all the like utensils and spices that I have, you know? Kitchen essentials, I don't know. Let me know what you think of that, or they could be two separate videos, I guess, like kitchen essentials tour, and then fridge and pantry tour, I don't know. But it's so exciting, first time in my life, having a fully vegan fridge and pantry, pretty cool. And I don't know about this, do we like this? I don't know, it looks kind of weird on the camera. I don't know. It's cool from this angle when you're like opening the fridge because it's just like foliage. Anyways, let's just get into it. Okay, let's start with freezer stuff, I guess, so it's not out for a long time. Hmm. This is some of the freezer stuff. We got some frozen strawberries. I actually have a lot of frozen fruit right now. Some frozen dragon fruit, thanks to my friend Loopy for her mom giving um, us all her extra dragon fruit. Pineapple tidbits. Strawberry. It feels a little like freezer burnt in there. It feels a little, feels a little crispy, you know? Probably should be using that soon. We made like a few smoothies, you'll see. Um, some just like fruity smoothies with the pineapple and dragon fruit and stuff. It's not going as smooth now. There's not much milk left. You can use the soy milk. Use the soy milk. Soy milk. Oh, it doesn't smooth as well as I thought it would. Yeah, it's just too big of a bowl. Mm. Okay. We got some. Oh, only a very little frozen bananas left. Smoothie. I want to get back to making my like peanut butter blueberry smoothies, but. I haven't stirred the peanut butter yet, and I keep like in the morning, I'm like, I don't wanna stir the peanut butter, so I make something else. So I did end up stirring the peanut butter finally and making my classic Emily smoothie. The only thing that's different is that I used half a fresh banana because I only had so much left of the frozen bananas. And then I also put a little bit of cinnamon in there for a little flavorful twist. And I don't know why I put the peanut butter on the side like that. I just got lazy and scraped it down the side. And then it was ugly. It's ugly. It's so ugly. Why did I do that? I don't know. But yeah, classic smoothies. So good. Mm, yum. Sustenance. Sustenance. Please do not judge my bedroom too much as it's a work in process and I don't own a lot of furniture. Thank you, thank you. Now to thank Skillshare for helping me pay my rent by sponsoring this video 
and to talk a little bit about them. In case you've never heard of them before, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring courses for all types of creative and curious people. I've been watching this class on Skillshare called Plants at Home, Uplift Your Spirit and Your Space, taught by Christopher Griffin, to inspire myself on what kind of plants I should be getting for my new apartment. I like that the class provides a good amount of content overall, but that the individual lessons are still like short and to the point, and that they give specific recommendations on like where to start, and also what kind of plants are best for beginners like me. On Skillshare, you might find a new creative endeavor for while you're bored at home, or develop a skill that you've always been interested in in the past, but never really got the chance to delve into. You can also engage with the community by sharing your journey, asking questions, and offering support to other members with similar interests as you. With that said, if you're at all interested in trying out Skillshare, the first thousand people to visit the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that, it's only about $10 a month. Again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And let's get back to it. Frozen mango, frozen oranges, I think. Probably could put that in a smoothie too. Like it's frozen, so it's not like any of this is going bad, but I'd love to like condense some frozen fruit soon. So probably hope to use like these in a smoothie so I can get these bags out of here. Someone told me to freeze ginger because then it's easier to grate and it's, you know, it stays good longer. But should I have peeled it before I put it in here? I'm not sure. I also have these snap peas or sugar peas, sugar snap peas. What's the other one? Whatever. They were in a different video and I wasn't using them quick enough because there were so many. So I froze them. I probably should have blanched them and then froze them. But I didn't. Peanut butter half baked Ben and Jerry's, one of my favorite Ben and Jerry's flavors. It's not. Blueberries, smoothies, sweet peas, and flaxseed. I just keep it in the freezer because I don't go through it that fast, but I use it for like flax eggs, so I like to have it around. Oh, I guess this is a fridge tour. Whatever. Whatever. What is this? Well, I have frozen apple. I should put this in oatmeal or something, or smoothie, I guess. Just throw it in a green smoothie or something. I think it was like an apple that I opened that just was like grainy and gross, so I just froze it. I did end up using the frozen apple in a smoothie and it was just a little green smoothie. I used up some frozen pineapple, I used up an orange, I used up a bunch of spinach, I put a little bit of lemon juice in there. I think that's it. I actually didn't put any banana and it ended up fine. I think because I had a little bit of soy milk in there to make it like kind of creamy. Sometimes I'm kind of scared to use soy milk in like a tropical fruit smoothie. I don't know why, I just feel like it's gonna taste weird, but it didn't taste weird. Maybe because I didn't put too much. And then also, um, sometimes apples can make a smoothie a little bit like gritty textured and then I would normally add a handful of ice cubes but since I still hadn't washed the ice cube tray I just put in a handful of frozen mango um, just to have a little bit more like frozen items to improve the texture and it was a very nice little smoothie sweet potato casserole from Thanksgiving no Christmas got some apple cake from my birthday there's I just had so many desserts from everybody thank you everybody and I just froze some of it so that I didn't have to shove it all in my face in one week. But we still have so many like snacks and treats out that we've been going through. So I have yet to delve into those. And I also have these, which I have yet to try. Pepperoni pizza bites from Morningstar. Quite excited about these. I hope that they're good. I've never tried them before. It says they're new. Frozen vegan shrimp from the Asian grocery market. Asian from RN market the Asian grocery. They have like a vegan section or vegetarian section, I don't know, where there's a bunch of faux meats. It's a little freezer burnt, but I think it won't really matter when you like, if I'm gonna fry these. I don't know, I've been saving them because I only really wanna use them when I'm gonna like really do it, you know, like really do it to them. Really like I wanna batter them and fry them. I don't know, or I could put make like a pasta with shrimp. You know, I don't wanna just like throw these into something. I want it to be like an event. So anyways, so then that's how, why they're freezer burnt basically. But I should use, maybe we could use them this week. I have some Trader Joe's vanilla ice cream. A day of cheesecake that I stupidly bought. I feel like I bought it in like November because I was like, oh, like when I just want to have a little treat, then I'll have this ready for me. 
but it's like since then I've had just like endless amounts of desserts and snacks and treats at my disposal. Anyways, that's all the frozen stuff that is mine, at least. I'm trying to put like the bags in here. The ba okay, the bags of things so that it's like a little bit organized. It's like full. Just moved in and it's full. Fridge stuff. Let's get the fridge stuff out. I have I still have a bunch of dates that I want to use. I'm not gonna take everything out. But I just have a bunch of dates. I could put them in smoothies or maybe make like bars or something. That would be a good idea. Um we got some leftovers from the Noki. Earlier in the week before I filmed the kitchen inventory grocery haul part of the video, I was feeling making a little pasta dish because that was one thing that we actually had all the like appropriate ingredients and seasonings for in the apartment. But I didn't have like a large pot yet to boil any sort of spaghetti or like longer longer type noodle. Luckily, Casey had some gnocchi in the pantry from our Trader Joe's grocery trip. So I decided to use that because that was something that I could actually cook in the wok, which was the largest like pot that I had. And that worked totally fine because there wasn't that much in the bag also. But I was planning on making like a TVP meat sauce for the protein, but I ended up not having that much TVP in the bag left. So I also stole some of Casey's Trader Joe's meatless meatballs and I fried those up in a pan with some onions and I added some broccoli, mushroom and tomatoes and a bunch of seasonings. We got some nutritional yeast, some rosemary, dried rosemary. We got some truffle powder. These are all just seasonings that I got, uh, a lot of seasonings that I got for Christmas. <laughs> My stocking um, was just a lot of seasonings for the new apartment. And salt pepper, obviously, I got a little Italian seasoning mix as well in there. And then just put that little tomato sauce on top of that let it simmer for a little bit in there. And later I also put a little bit of spinach in there. And I also scooped some of the pasta water from the gnocchi to thicken up the sauce a little bit. Um, there was still a lot of sauce. The, I really underestimated the amount of gnocchi, gnocchi noodles that were in there. Can you even call those noodles? I don't really know. Little bits, little nuggets. They're like pasta nuggets. And... Unfortunately, because there wasn't that much gnocchi, there was kind of an awkward ratio of meatball to gnocchi going on in the leftovers. Um, so we ended up actually just cutting up some of the meatballs to be little meat pepperonis, meatball pepperonis for our pizza leftovers later in the week. Produce. We got some um, cremini mushrooms and an onion. We got another onion in there, so one and a half onions. Very exciting. The mushrooms I just used in the pasta, and we might make pizza later on in the week, like homemade pizza. So um, we could put mushrooms on that. That was what I was thinking. So I did end up making some homemade pizza this week and i made the dough from scratch which i usually do because i just like it that way i think it's fun but for some reason i could not get it to rise like at all this time i don't know what i did wrong but clearly something it was very upsetting but it was still good um the dough was just not you know as like thick and chewy and um fluffy i don't know it was dense I just, it was okay though, but let me talk to you. I just want to talk. I just want to talk about these pans, these um sheets, cookie sheets, baking sheets, whatever. I got a three pack from Target because I didn't have any cookie sheets to my name. And I don't know if you can tell, but they have like this texture on the bottom of them, perforation or something. They're, they're bumpy, I don't know. And I guess it's to help like circulate the heat and air uh, for underneath the thing that you're baking. I was thinking about like roasted veggies when I bought them because I like to do roasted veggies in the oven, you know? And I thought that would help like cook it from the underbelly better. But dude, pizza, it was perfect for pizza. Oh my God, like, you know, I always like end up burning the top of the pizza because I'm trying to brown 
the bottom of the pizza. But this was perfect and it cooked it so fast too, unless it's just the oven here. I'm really getting used to like the um, stove and oven in this apartment because I've cooked in the same kitchen for so many freaking years. And I tried to, I tried to remember some of the tips and tricks that I learned from the Epicurious uh, like four levels of pizza video. I love those videos. I need to watch more of them because every time I watch one, I really feel like I learn. I really feel like I'm learning when I watch those. So there's a few things from that video that I tried to like apply to my pizza making. And I think that really saved it. You know, you wouldn't even know that I didn't get the dough to rise at all. It's literally 0% risen. So disappointing. I also have hummus to eat for like snacks, which I need to get into because I keep forgetting about it. Tofus, one and a half tofus. I want to do something with the tofu. I had an idea and then I forgot about it. We still have some Chinese food leftovers. I might have some of that for lunch. If you're in the Fresno Clovis area, I really recommend China Chef um, or a little peeking for some vegan Chinese food options. This is China Chef. We ordered some vegan chicken chow mein and also fried rice. A lot of the time for leftovers, I like to add some extra veggies, uh, maybe some extra protein to it just to make it like feel more fresh, um, spice it up a little and also make it like slightly healthier, maybe stretch the comfort foodiness out a bit. One of the times that we made it, we stir fried some veggies and also added some Trader Joe's gyozas to it. And then at another time, I just used my little microwave steamer thingy that I love a lot. Great purchase, by the way. I would recommend one if you, especially if you live in like a dorm or whatever. I have a sourdough bread loaf tomato. Oh, we have avocados. I really want to make avocado toast. <sighs> yeah. Put tomatoes on it, maybe some mushrooms, onions, I don't know. Probably just tomatoes if I'm feeling lazy. But with that sourdough, my favorite sourdough. Here's a couple little avocado toasts I made this week using the sprouts and also some tomatoes on there. Some of those little tomatoes. I love to put mustard on the avocado toast, sometimes lemon juice. I just like something a little tangy, you know, something a little spicy, you know, crushed red pepper or some hot sauce. And I also like a little something salty. So you got that everything bagel, everything but the bagel seasoning. Um, yeah. And then could also make some nice breakfast toasties if I want to. I thought I saw green for a second in the bread. <laughs> I also wanted to talk about how uh, I've been making toast without a toaster by using the air fryer. We don't have a toaster in the apartment and I have no particular plans of getting one anytime soon just because I'm totally fine with toasting bread in the air fryer. Um, I'm not too particular about like my toast, you know, it's just as long as there's like a little bit of crisp on there I'm good. I just put it in at about 350 for five minutes and it works for me If I wanted it to be a little more even I could probably flip it halfway through but this is working And this is also the other half of the banana that I used in the blueberry smoothie if anyone's wondering I don't know why I feel the need to say these things, but I said it I, I, I don't. Yeah, so tomatoes. I like these. I like this size of tomato. It's Campari tomatoes like between aroma tomato or whatever the bigger ones are beef steak and cherry or grape this is perfect carrots i have these little cocktail cucumbers little baby cubes those are really good to eat with oh with this just dipping them just dipping the whole cucumber and this vegan ranch dip from trader joe's which i've always been interested to try since i first saw it this is a good one i like this one personally personally i like it <laughs> these are just a couple little veggie trays you know um i also had ranch with some of these veggies once i ran out of the hummus but yeah they're just a little veggie tray for myself while i was cooking dinner one day because i was getting hungry was taking too long. And then also a little veggie tray while I was editing this video, actually. Broccoli, spinach, and some cauliflower. The cauliflower really needs to be used. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, cauliflower and peas. The frozen peas that I have. Should make something with cauliflower and peas. Maybe carrots too, just to have like another color of vegetable. Like a curry with that. 
So I was really just winging it with this one. You know, I knew I didn't have like all the proper ingredients, um, specifically spices for making a curry right now. So I was just like, you know, let's make a little curry inspired stew of sorts. A curry, sure. My best one, no. I did have some ginger, I got some onions and I just put some seasonings that were relevant. You know, we got some curry powder in there. We got some salt and pepper we got some garlic powder. I think that's all I had that was kind of relevant. I just put a lot- oh, turmeric. I had a little bit of turmeric. I just, you know, I just improvised by putting a lot of curry powder. Uh, and then I used my cauliflower. I used the peas. I put in a little bit of the tomatoes also, because normally I would have added in like some tomato paste to a curry. And since I didn't have that much cauliflower, I did add some chickpeas also just to have a little bit more going on, you know? And then I also added some, like maybe half of a can of coconut milk. And I added some greens mix that we had. And I just kept adding seasonings, you know? It just really needed a little more seasonings. Eventually, I will expand my spice collection, but I'm trying to not spend all of my money in the first week of being out, you know? I'm trying to take it slow, just go buy like what's necessary first, you know? Um, it's okay to make a few things that are a little bit, you know, creative, a little inauthentic, obviously. Um, but yeah, it was pretty good. And then we just had that with some basmati rice. Oh, we also have like a... Power greens mix. I just opened them so that they could let some, let them air out a little bit. This was hopefully for like salads. I want to make some sort of salad this week with um, the chickpeas on top. Classic Emily salad. Oh, I keep forgetting about this. We have some micro greens, which would go great on some avocado toast slash sauce salad. Well, this is just the tomato sauce that I use for the pasta that we will hopefully use for pizza as well, and hopefully it's enough. I think it will be. The rest is just some a few sauces, butters. We got some nog that I used in my oatmeal today. Actually, I think I did half water, a quarter nog, and a quarter soy milk. Because the nog can be a little bit much if you put like too much of it in your oatmeal. I added some hemp seeds, cinnamon, apple, maple syrup, and I just microwaved most of the apple in there, and then I added a little bit to the top afterward. I don't know why. I should have just put it all in there. We got some booch left over, and we got some soy milk that's almost empty, and I need to go get some more. I have a bunch of seeds and nuts over there, so those would go great on the salad. I feel like that's enough things for now because we're already like halfway through the week, and we already have some leftovers going, so I don't have that much stuff. There's something in here that I need to use. Oh, that's another thing. I bought this beautiful pista pasta from Trader Joe's because it just looked so beautiful and I've been wanting to make like a chicken noodle soup. Oh, that's why, that's what I was thinking of using the tofu for. I wanted to make my chicken noodle soup but with tofu, so tofu noodle soup, but when I say tofu noodle soup, it sounds like I'm saying the noodles are made out of tofu, but it's just the chicken noodle soup, replace the chicken with tofu. It's really good and I have tofu right now, but we don't have a big pot. And my favorite meal of the week, it's usually my favorite meal of the week, is the soup of the week. Soup of the week, oh, like a restaurant. As I've said many times in my videos, I try to make some type of soup every week. Well, in the winter and fall seasons. They're just so good and like, mmm, hydrating, comforting, delicious, easy to make. Uh, you can use up a lot of things that you're trying to use up in them. I just love them so much. And so yeah, I made a little chicken noodle soup, but with tofu. And I basically just like stir fry all the, well, I stir fry the like onions first, and then I add in all my veggies afterward, starting by ones that will take longer to cook and then going down. And then I add in all my seasonings. I add in a lot of nutritional yeast. I like a lot of nutrition nutritional yeast in pretty much most soups. I don't know, I think it adds to the broth a lot and it's just good. And I added, oh, dude, I don't know. I'll write it in the descriptions. I don't remember all the seasonings right now, but I add in my bouillon and then I start adding in water little by little. I try not to go too hard at first because you can always add water, but you can't take it away. Well, you can by uh, boiling it, you know, simmering it out. 
but that takes a lot longer. And then I cut up some pressed and frozen tofu in little cubes and put it in. And then I also put in a bunch of greens. I like to cut them up too. It's really not necessary, but I think it's easier to eat that way. I don't want like a whole leaf just floating around in the soup, you know? And then once everything is cooked to your liking, then that's when I add in the noodles and I just let them cook in the soup because that's what the original recipe that I based my soup off of did. And it's so good. Uh, I love it. <laughs> my favorite meal. So good. Oh my God. Yes. I think that's enough things for now. We don't want to get too crazy. A lot of the time I think of too many things to make and then I end up not making half of it. But that's kind of good also, because you like to have like some backup ideas so that you have options when you enter the kitchen. Anyways, not meant to be a bit. <laughs> Sorry. So now for the honorable mentions of the week, which is literally just the things that I ate, but did not specifically set out to eat in the planning part of the video. Does that make sense? Um, I got some boba. I got a hazelnut soy milk tea boba. And this place also does their boba in brown sugar rather than honey, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I freaking love boba. And also I accidentally took a slow motion video. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. And it's very scary. The sound on this thing, the audio, it's really scary. And also Casey and I made some chocolate chip cookies. Uh, we didn't need to make like a whole batch, but we just wanted some. So we decided to make a bowl of cookie dough and then just air fry a few cookies so we didn't have to use the oven and then balled up the rest of the dough and put it in the freezer so that we could just have, you know, little dough balls ready for when we want to air fry some more cookies. Cause I like fresh cookies, you know? I, I only want to eat them like fresh. And so when they go stale, it's like, what the frick? And the cookies definitely come out a little different in the air fryer, but I kind of like them. I don't know. They're like slightly more crispy on the outside and then slightly more gooey on the inside. So if, you know, it's if that's something that you're into, you can look into it. They have little pimples on the bottom. They have little pimples. Just little pimples. <laughs> Anyways, okay, that's, I think, it for this video. So thank you for watching. Um, hopefully it wasn't too awkward in this video because I feel awkward because I'm not quite settled in here yet. You know, I don't feel like this is my space yet. It's getting there. And it's also like, it's so white. Like this backdrop is just so like empty and I'm just here. I'm just here. See you later. I'll be back. I'll be back on streaming soon if I'm not already by the time this is uploaded. And yeah, look out for that to kitchen tour once I'm more settled in. And these boxes are off the freaking floor. Do you like my grass rug? I just laid it out yesterday. <laughs>